So uh, in the last lecture we uh, talked about the JKR model and we showed that the JKR model gives this equation for contact radius AQ by this one where L is the force acting between two solids this is the L force and gamma is, is the surface energy of the solids involved and we are using gamma S assuming that both materials are same if both materials are not same then we should use WAB which is the work of addition between two materials A and B <clears throat> so this equation uh, gave us first of all this equation proves that if there is no surface energy effect then we obtain the Hurge equation so Hurge equation is uh, is the contact radius between two solid surfaces um, when there is no uh, surface energy effect so this is one thing we have understood other thing we have understood from the JKR model is that the pull of force can be given by this equation and this is depends on the geometry so but if we have got a spherical solid and a flat surface and they are same materials and gamma s is the uh, the surface energy of the two solids then we can give the pull of force that means when we are pulling this apart what will be the force required at which the this adhesive interaction will break that can be obtained from here so this equation which was also given by um, Bradley in 1932 but he gave uh, the adhesive force or pull of force as equal to 2 pi r w12 so he used 2 whereas in this case we have used this one so there is a small slight difference here okay so for example if I convert this gamma s as w a b by 2 then it will become 3 by 2 and it will be 1.5 so for JKR model it, this factor is 1.5 for Bradley it, Bradley's equation this factor is 2 if we consider w 1 2 so this is a small uh, difference between the two but both lead to the same equation another thing we have understood is we should be using WAB which means the work of addition between two solids as equal to gamma 1 gamma 2 surface energy of one solid surface energy of the second solid minus the surface energy of the interface between the solid 1 and solid 2 and this equation is also known as Dupre equation so when we are talking about friction and tribological um, situations these kind of surface forces become very important even though we may think that um, tribological contacts in engineering are macroscopic right because we have got big uh, bearings the bearing dimensions are very big <clears throat> so there should be should not be any effect of these atomic scale um, interactions but actually in tribology whether you are dealing with macro system or micro system or even nano system the actual contacts are happening at atomic scale the actual contact is always at nanoscopic nano scale or atomic scale we can say because these interactions are at asperity level so even though overall we are dealing with macroscopic uh, materials and uh, machine elements but the actual interaction is happening at the atomic scale and this is the reason that no matter what we do the materials will always interact at atomic scale and therefore these 
physics and these uh, principles are very very important for our understanding. I also talked about the apparatus called surface force apparatus. So this is apparatus is based on the principle of this equation or Bradley's equation whichever you use and this gives a possibility to measure um, surface forces, the pull of force and also to find out the surface energy of solids of different kinds of solids. We will talk about adhesion and how adhesion affects friction. So we all know friction is, um, is a result of uh, many events happening and one of them is the adhesive interaction between the two surfaces. So if this is stationary and I make this move solid 2 under some load. Okay. So the in adhesive forces here will play a very very strong role in the friction force. So there is no way we can escape that unless we do something with the surfaces. So adhesion plays a very very strong role in friction. Later uh, I will show you uh, one analysis which was carried out by my PhD student on um, how adhesion is related to friction and actually he established an empirical relation between adhesion and friction. So we will discuss that later. Adhesion force can be defined as the maximum force experienced between two solids during separation from the contact. So this is same as the pull of force we were talking about. So when we do this experiment then we can find out the adhesive force. So that means the atoms and molecules at the interface are attracting each other. Basically they are attracting each other. And because of this attraction we see the adhesive force. We experience the adhesive force. So <clears throat> we know all atoms they um, attract each other and this is this comes from the the basic graph you might have studied before the energy potential as function of the interatomic distance and here is the interatomic distance and then this graph is given the, as this okay so if there are two atoms in close proximity very very close proximity and we are trying to separate them apart or bring them closer to each other whichever then we will experience this kind of energy potential so the energy of the system will vary like this so this gives the minimum energy and here the energy increases and here is zero okay so what it says is that when the energy is in the negative side here there will be attractive force attractive interaction and when the energy is in the positive side here there will be repulsive so that means there is a limit to which we can bring these atoms together beyond that if we, we further reduce the interatomic distance then there will be repulsive interaction and there will be a large force and in fact you can also see the uh, diagram which gives the force which follows something like this so this is the force with respect to R so at some point the force is maximum and it is uh, <clears throat> attractive force here and here is the repulsive force so this is how the interatomic potential and interatomic forces will act together and this is what happens so if we are at this point so if the distance between the atoms is from here and little bit more in the range up to 10 nanometer generally then you will see that attractive force is very very strong 
this is the attracting force so from this point which is uh, given as uh, some fraction of the interatomic distance so at this point you have got the minimum energy and the maximum force will be experienced here and this interaction is also known as uh, Leonard's Jones interaction or Le Leonard Jones potential which is given as some constant A divided by R6 plus some constant B divided by R12 so so this equation the Leonard Jones potential equation controls the the potential with respect to R which is interatomic distance okay so if if this is neglected to some extent because this is very high number we can say that the the potential varies with 1 over R6 so adhesion is the overall attractive force experienced by two material surfaces when they are brought in close contact because of the presence of surface forces and other factors there is addition force experience between almost all materials unless their surfaces have been modified specifically to reduce addition so when we are talking about uh, bulk material or um, not at atomic scale in the bigger scale so what will happen is all the atoms that are present here they will interact with the atoms present on this surface so there will be forces acting between all of them okay. but as they are going away from the real contact the effect will be reduced because as i said up to 10 nanometer you have got strong force and beyond 10 nanometer um, the forces are extremely small so you can very well neglect them so all the atoms which are very close here and here within less than 10 nanometer they will have combined effect so there will be an average effect of all the atoms and that is we measure as the pull of force so all materials will have uh, addition unless we modify the surfaces so for example if we modify by um, some method um, by changing the surface then we can reduce the adhesive force but we may not be able to eliminate all the adhesive interaction so now what are those forces what uh, at atomic scale so some of those surface related forces are van der waals forces electrostatic forces chemical bonding hydrogen bonding and capillary forces so these are the forces that are acting between the two surfaces which we measure as adhesion adhesive interaction okay so van der waal forces uh, are the forces which act between two atoms whether it is gas liquid or solid electrostatic force will act because of some uh, charges if there are charges uh, available there uh, opposite uh, charges will attract each other and um, like charges will repel each other so that kind of electrostatic force and the chemical bonding may happen okay although we don't deal with chemical bonding in this case but because of the chemical bonding possibility also it is possible that adhesive force will be high hydrogen bonding is very much possible especially with polar molecules like water presence of water so hydrogen bonding is another force and capillary force also acts so we will just explain little bit of each of these forces how they work so for example the van der waal forces we were talking about it is because of the atoms which are here and they are interacting with each other because each atom has got its own uh, electromagnetic field so when they interact with each other in within their in mag intermagnetic field they will induce some um, poles so this creates a kind of dipole uh, dipoles and because of these dipoles they will attract each other so this is part of the van der waal forces the electrostatic forces are because of the charges 
which are here for example and some other kinds of bonding and chemical bonding can happen as well as some interdiffusion can happen metallic bonds for example if there are two metals then the metal atoms can go from each other so some can go from here to here so that will cause interdiffusion so this is also another we can also call it sintering of the two surfaces so these are the atomic scale forces the capillary forces are shown here which is because of basically condensation of liquid um, or condensation of a vapor into liquid and the possibility is that water will condense at these points and because of this condensation there will be force acting between the two so here this has been shown in a um, bigger scale so here you've got one particle and the surface and the liquid is condensed here liquid has condensed okay. so now depending upon the interfacial surface energy okay, depending upon the surface energy this liquid can form a concave type of sur concave surface or convex surface so in the case of concave surface movement if it is a concave here then there will be a tension tensile force acting and this is also known as uh, laplace pressure so laplace pressure will bring them together so if it is concave then this solid uh, particle will get attracted to this one because of the capillary forces so this force acts between uh, two materials so any example can you give any example from our life about experiencing these capillary forces well in a small tube when we pour in water then water uh, some of the liquid then liquid get dry okay yes that is a capillary force um, acting and capillary is, yeah because of this surface tension the uh, water will rise but in practical example one is very good example is um, sand particles so for example if sand particles are dry they they don't attract each other right they uh, like they are very uh, separate apart but when you add little bit of water then what happens sand particles start coming together right so ideally we should say that when we are putting water it should make the sand flow even more but when we put little bit of water it makes the sand stronger it becomes very strong and if we put more water then it starts flowing so in the beginning when we add little bit of water it becomes very strong because of this reason you know when you are walking on a sea beach and for example water is flowing like this in the sea so if you want to run on the sea beach and this side is the sand right dry sand and when you want to run on the sea beach uh, which place is the best for running or jogging too far away here or too close to the water i think so in between in between somewhere here right because this is the place where you have the exact amount of water that is making the sand very strong together because because of the presence of water they are getting attracted to each other far away there is no moisture in it so it is very dry so very weak and too close to water there are too much of water and that also makes the sand particles very uh, flowing uh, against each other so in the middle so this is the action of capillary forces that are acting between the sand particles and the sand particles uh, have uh, this uh, concave mini sky and therefore they attract each other so i've got uh, um, uh, acrylic sheet here <coughs> and some particles so for the particles i have taken uh, rice grains can you see the rice grains here yes sir okay sorry it just fell down so these are the rice grains here 
okay now my finger is very very dry so there is no moisture in it and if I try to pick up I can't pick up any particle okay so this rice grain represents the sand grain or any kind of uh, solid okay so but if I just wet my finger just slightly and you see the rice grain has come to my finger it is sticking to my finger right so so here also you can see that so this is the of capillary forces it acts between two solids <clears throat> Sir, in also the case when we applying sir, in festival, when yeah. we put a tikka on head, yes. sir, we put some butter on this. That. Yes, you are right. So when we put that tikka or so uh, yes, so dry powder will not stick to our forehead or our skin. It may stick little bit because we always have some. A moisture because of the sweat you know so some moisture is always there on our uh, skin it is not 100% dry but to make it little stronger we have to put some water or some some liquid generally water I guess water is used yes yeah so that is the uh, capillary force acting between two solids so we have talked about the adhesion uh, adhesive force and um, the cause of adhesive forces. So there are some interatomic forces acting and there is another one which is capillary forces acting because of the presence of uh, a liquid here. So now uh, uh, you have seen that uh, surface energy, you have understood to some extent surface energy, but we will go in further detail about surface energy, how we can get, uh, how we can measure surface energy. And what is surface energy? So, addition can be inferred by. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, sir, from previous slide, sir. Yeah. Sir, how so a hydrogen bonding, a hydrogen bonding force come into the picture, sir, when we're talking about two surfaces? Because they are mostly solid in nature, sir. And I, uh, So, hydrogen bonding can occur if. It depends upon the material. For example, if this material has got, uh, generally happens in the case of uh, uh, polymers. So polymers have got different, uh, very complex molecules, right? Yes. And they have some functional groups. So for example, some have COH. And these functional groups, some has OH. Okay. So these functional groups, okay, basically they are not 100% connected to this molecule, they have got some charge at the end. Okay, And very good example is water, H2O. So there are two H and one O. Okay, So O is uh, basically a negative side, right? And H is positive side because they share the electrons. So what happens is they become like a dipole. So one side becomes more positive, another side becomes more negative and therefore they act like a dipole. So water molecule is, that's why water molecule is called polar because it acts like a dipole. It has got one heavily positive side, another heavily negative side and that makes the whole uh, molecule acting like a dipole. So this is uh, therefore, they are ready to make some bonds. So, if there is another water molecule with H, H2O, then what will happen? This has got positive side and this has got negative side. So, they will get attracted to each other, right? So, water molecules are the very good example of hydrogen bonds. So, similar kind of hydrogen bonds can happen with also another molecules like any kind of polymer molecules that are here so this is the effect of hydrogen bonding yes sir yes, so addition can be inferred by pull of force which can be estimated by the surface energies of the two surfaces involved so it is very important that we should know about surface energies surface energy of solids and how we get them 
how we can measure them. Okay. So first we will start with these two definitions surface tension and surface energy because as I said before that they are basically same thing this applies to liquid and this applies to solids but the origin of these two uh, terms or tension and energy are same and that is because when you have got material and there are atoms here inside atoms close to the surface okay and there are bondings between each other you know it can be chemical bonding it can be um, metallic bond and so on so whenever there is a bonding that means they are attracting each other so there is a force acting between them them so no atom is existing alone it is always with something else some other atoms okay but the atoms which are on the surface they have got only attraction to this these atoms but nothing on this side In this side there is a free similarly happening for this one so the situation of the atoms in the bulk is different from the situation of the atoms on the surface the surface atoms are not fully in equilibrium with other atoms they have got some uh, unsatisfied bond acting here so because of this reason they carry some energy and this is the surface energy or in the case of liquid they act like a tension as a surface tension so this is the origin of surface tension and surface energy so liquid or solid surfaces have atoms and molecules that are not in complete interaction with the rest of the atoms and molecules which lie in the bulk of the material this situation leaves the surface or surfaces with extra energy known as free surface energy so it is always known as free surface energy or surface free energy in the case of solids for liquids this energy manifests as surface tension or on the liquid surface so gamma is uh, used for both surface energy and surface tension so surface energy or surface tension surface energy because we are talking about energy we give this units these units millijoule per meter square so energy per unit area so we can say gamma is dw over da and surface tension because it is a tension or force we write in this format in these units newton per meter but if you do the dimensional analysis both are same both are same now work of addition we have already understood is the amount of work done to separate two solids solid one solid two and bring them to infinity so so how much work we have to do to separate these two surfaces in vacuum if we conduct whole thing in vacuum so that is the work of addition so work of addition is uh, sometimes previously i wrote w but somewhere it is also written in g is gamma 1 gamma 2 so these are the surface energies of the solids solid 1 and solid 2 and gamma 1 2 you should know that when we talk about surface energy there is always it is an interfacial property so there is always something about so for example solid 1 here and we are talking about surface energy of solid 1 then what is above solid 1 what is the interface how is it making interface so it is making interface with air so air is there or there can be vapor if vapor of the same same material so that can be there so that air or vapor is always present so we are talking about the interfacial energy so if we talk about solid and liquid so here for example liquid droplet is here and solid surface then we write as gamma sa plus gamma la minus gamma sl okay so of the solid of the liquid and solid liquid and as we understood before that if the two materials are same that 
we can uh, give this equation now if we talk about this water droplet on a solid surface and here the water droplet you will see that sometimes droplets make like this as a nice droplet sometimes it may it may even make a very very round but in some cases it makes like this right you have seen that have you seen yes sir. yeah so it depends upon the solid surface as well as depends upon the liquid that means how they are interacting with each other and this geometry that is being formed here whether this way this way or this way is because of the the forces that are acting because of the surface tension and the surface energy the interaction so it is basically a force balance so under the given situation of solid the liquid and the air or vapor this force balance will act and finally it will come to an equilibrium so what we are seeing in this figure is an equilibrium of this liquid on this solid surface in the presence of air so this is the equilibrium and this is a force equilibrium so force balance and at this point which is the point where liquid solid and air all are there three three phases are together at this point the force balance is done in this way so a force is acting here between the solid and the liquid which is gamma sl a force is acting between the uh, solid and the air which is this one and this force is between liquid liquid and air so these three forces are basically balancing each other and theta is known as the contact angle if it is a water water droplet then we call it water contact angle otherwise we call it just contact angle so this force balance is happening here at this point where liquid air and the solid meet and this is given as young's equation so if you talk about young's equation it is basically a balancing of these forces so when a droplet of a liquid is placed on a solid surface the droplet attains a shape which is controlled by the interfacial properties of the solid and the liquid and also the air okay so all the three so here we have got air or uh, vapor the gaseous phase so these forces are acting here and these forces have been given the names here so if we do the force balance then we can get gamma sa is equal to gamma sl this force here and gamma la which is here multiplied by cos theta this is theta so this will be the force balance and this equation is known as young's equation so young's equation is very very important for tribology because this defines tells us about surface energy of solid surfaces and surface energy is what causes adhesion adhesive interaction between and then adhesion is related to friction so ultimately they are all related to friction sir here gamma la cos theta is only balance its sin theta component is not balance uh, so uh, here we are not balancing this this in this um, uh, direction so only here only in this line okay so yes uh, this force will be uh, component will be here but there is a interatomic forces here acting so they will they will also balance with each other okay so so even though it has not been shown here but they this force will get balanced by, because of the interatomic forces acting here okay so the atoms are also pulling in this direction so we are only balancing this this part we talked about the surface forces and among all surface forces wonderwall forces are extremely important so 
So we will just discuss about Van der Waals forces. What are they? The Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces. The interatomic or intermolecular attractive or repulsive interaction caused by permanent or induced dipoles are known as Van der Waals forces. These are electrodynamic forces which are non-covalent, non-electrostatic interaction. So that means the Van der Waals forces are because of the electronic make of the atoms. So they are electrodynamic okay? because of the electrons moving in the uh, inside an atom. They are not um, because of any covalent interaction. That means not because of any uh, chemical reaction and they are also not because of non-electrostatic. They are also non-electrostatic interaction. That means they are not because of the presence of a charge. There are three types of Van der Waals forces. One is called orientation forces, Kisson force, induction forces and dispersion forces. Among these three, the dispersion forces are the strongest and actually they are the forces which are normally considered. These two forces are not considered because they are not as strong. So A, orientation force is because of the dipole-dipole interaction. So if there are two dipoles like this, it has got uh, some charges, positive and negative, positive and negative. So what will happen is they will attract to get attracted to each other and they will settle in some situation. So for example, they will have positive and negative together and they will settle. So this is the one type of interaction. Another can happen because of dipole and non-dipole. So there is a dipole here and there is a, another atom which is non-dipole then what will happen is this will induce dipole here and because of this induced dipole they will get attracted to each other so positive will induce negative negative will induce positive and therefore it will make this also a dipole and they will get attracted to each other the third one c which is di uh, non dipole so this happens between non-dipole but still the forces are very strong and the reason is even though on average it is non-dipole but instantaneously it is always has got some positive some negative interaction uh, situation so these atoms are instantaneously if you talk about any instant of time it has got it is a dipole but on average it is non-dipole. So instantaneously it will induce another dipole here and they will get attracted to each other. So this is called dispersion forces or London dispersion force and they are the main cause of Van der Waals forces. Here D illustrates how the electric field E of a polar molecule induces a dipole in a non-polar molecule. So this we just talked about. So it has got the electrical field, electromagnetic field and this will induce a dipole in another atom which is non-dipole. Okay. And here we are talking about dispersion forces which is because of between non-dipole and non-dipole because of the instantaneous charge or in instantaneous dipole that exists in the atoms. On average it is non-dipole. So if we talk about this one orientation force, it's basically because of the electrostatic attraction. So Coulomb's force acting between the two. Another thing about adhesion is that, as I said before, if there are two surfaces and many, many atoms are interacting with each other. So we assume that because of this interaction between these two atoms, of these two materials, this interaction is not affecting any other interaction. So they are all individually attracting each other, interacting with each other. So there is a, a sum of the, all the interaction. Will be the force that is acting between the two. Okay. So we assume that they are not interfering with each other, but in reality they will 
but here there is an assumption that they do not interfere with each other. So that gives us some method to calculate the total force that is acting. For most of the materials, except for very polar such as water, so polar has got uh, hydrogen bond. So we, we do not consider here. The London dispersion force is the dominant one and contributes 70 to 100 percent of the total Van der Waals forces. So if there is only Van der Waals forces acting, then the London dispersion force or we just call it dispersion force is the most dominant. And the interaction energy for London dispersion force is given by this equation. So here you see the interaction energy here and it is proportional to r to the power 6 as we were talking about Leonard Jones potential. So using this we can actually find out the potential of this um, because of the London dispersion forces where r is the interatomic distance, alpha is per polarizability and h nu is the characteristic energy with h as the Planck's constant and nu as the main dispersion frequency. So we can finally give all the constants as one constant here and we can write r to the power 6 where c London is a constant which depends on the polarizability and dispersion energy. So this is how uh, the Van der Waals forces because of dispersion forces is um, modeled in a simplified way. Further um, explained here, the dispersion interaction energy between atoms and molecules are additive for macroscopic bodies. So this is what I was talking that for two um, materials, macroscopic materials, they are all additive. Their interactions are all additives. This is the total interaction is the sum of the all pairwise interaction. Pairwise means one pair, another pair, another pair here. They are all interacting with each other and we assume that they are not interfering into each other. Okay. But in fact they will, but this is just the assumption. So with this assumption, this method uses the approach proposed by Lipschitz and is described in terms of Haumaker constant. The interaction energy per unit area for Lipschitz, Van der Waals or LW forces between two flat surfaces is given for vacuum or air medium as this one. Okay. So this is the uh, interaction energy is given by this equation. So here you can see that um, D is the separation distance here between the two surfaces and AH is the Hamaker constant. So this resembles the previous equation which we were talking here. Okay. So it is based on that um, equation and finally this equation is given. So force will be the derivative of this with respect to the distance which is given as this one. So this is also another important uh, equation both the energy as well as the force but force is um, easier to handle because force is something that we can measure easily. So we can measure the uh, force between two surfaces and if we know the separation distance, we can find out this Hamaker constant. So all the uh, different constants have been put together as Hamaker constant, this one. So this is talked about quite a lot in not only in tribology, but also in uh, other fields like adhesion, rheology and so on. So this equation also you should remember and you should remember what is Hamaker constant here and how this equation came about. This is because of the, the London dispersion interaction from the Van der Waal forces and finally we get this equation. So basically between two surfaces um, the Van der Waal forces can be uh, very high if they are very close to each other. Okay? And obviously in tribology when you have got the sliding going on uh, these two surfaces have to come close together. So if it is uh, less than 10 nanometer, then the Van der Waal forces are very, very strong and that will lead to a lot of adhesive forces acting between the two. So one example in the nature you, you might have seen is, is this one. Um, 
<laughs> have you seen uh, of course you have seen gecko right gecko you, you know what is gecko no sir no because you um, we call it chipkili right chipkili or kya bolte hain right yes sir okay so in our houses we see this um uh, creature or animal which is called gecko in english so geckos can walk on um vertical surface right vertical surface even on the roof it can walk it can walk on you know most of the surfaces so there people have tried to study why geckos can walk on vertical surfaces or even uh, walk upside down and so there one of their method of getting the force is through the vulnerable forces and if you look at the gecko's feet gecko's feet has got this kind of very very small fibrils if you, you keep on uh, increasing the uh, this one was used in sem and we have increased the resolution magnification and finally you will see that something like this so this is known as sita okay one single is sita and then plural is city so this sita so that means the feet has got this kind of hairs and which has got sita and this a free surface and this surface actually makes the contact with the solid surface on which it is walking so there is a vulnerable forces acting between sita and the solid surface and this is how it can get the adhesive interaction and it works through the adhesive interaction uh, other bigger creatures bigger animals will use its nail to walk on rough surfaces but this creature can even walk on smooth surfaces like a glass so you must have seen on the window uh, pans or glass it can easily walk through right um, because yes. it, it it uses the vulnerable forces rather than any other kind of mechanical interaction between the nail and the roughness of the surface so it can walk on smooth surface because of this sita but it has to be a clean it, this sita has to be clean so that means if the surface is very dirty it might find it very hard to move or if the surface is very hydrophobic we will talk about hydrophilic and hydrophobic so then again it will find it difficult to walk because the vulnerable forces or surface forces are reduced so this is a, a very good example how nature uses these uh, interatomic forces vulnerable well forces to actually uh, conduct its its work so i will stop here uh, you have any question no sir okay okay so i am going in uh, deeper into this uh, area because this uh, gives us the basic foundation of the tribological interaction the surface energy which is very very important so talking more deeply into the physics of the problem okay so if there is no further question we will stop here